These are Scythe Kaze Flex 2s. We already had these in use on a number of occasions. Scythe really loves to use these on all kinds of air coolers. Given on some it was still the original Kaze Flex, but these are the second generation. And right now, Scythe makes some really good points in the fan market. The Grand Tornado was very interesting to say the least. A very very good case fan, a horrible radiator fan, but a, but a great case fan. So for today, there is something to expect of these, but these are not just regular Kaze Flex 2s. These are the 2000 RPM ones. They exist in different versions. There is a 1200, 1500 and this 2000 RPM model pushing up to 90.28 CFM and up to 2.67 millimeters of H2O. There also is a white and a RGB model which spec-wise looks really identical, ignoring of course the mesmerizing RGB effect. Compared to the previous model, there are relatively small generational changes that have been made. Scythe seems to have played a bit with the fan blade design. We still got that 11 blade design, which by the way is like a ridiculously big amount, given what everybody else is doing. But it seems to me like the angle has very slightly shifted and that paired with the other miniature changes gives the Flex 2 now slightly more CFM at the cost of a tiny bit of static pressure. And the bearing has changed. Instead of a sealed precision fluid dynamic bearing, we now got a high precision fluid dynamic bearing. They didn't even change the text. Oh, and the color. In the past, Scythe always had that iconic grayish color across all of their products. Yeah, that's gone now. Everything around the fan, from the blade to the frame, everything is all black. Even the pre-installed anti-vibration rubber corners. Out of the box, a Kaze Flex comes in a relatively clean looking box, a bit of imagery, some feature overview and a pretty worked out spec sheet. Inside we'll find the fan itself and some installation material. Either regular screws or these rubber pins to get rid of even more vibrations and this 200mm long PVM extension cable. On the fan side, we now got a 300mm long 4-pin PVM cable, which is covered in some sleeving material, but for some reason not all the way, which I just don't really get. It, it looks kind of odd and, and cheap. And adding the extension, we got about 500mm in total worth of cable to make these fit even inside the biggest cases out there. But okay, everything needed has been said, Let's do some benchmarks. We first tested the Case Flex 2 using the Case Fan Simulator, which measures the CPU temperature underneath a passive Noxia P1 in a wooden box where two fans recycle the air within it. Spinning at the max 2000 RPM speed, the Kaze Flex 2 managed to keep the CPU at 42.9 degrees C above ambient, which is a surprisingly good result. It's right next to the new Lee and Lee Uni fans and on the exact same level as the EK Loop FPT fans, so very, very good so far. Actually, it's on the exact border of very quick spinning fans, like everything above the Kaze Flex is breaking that 2000 RPM barrier. We also let the fan spin slower and slower in 10% steps and we note down the temperature and noise at each point, giving us a noise to performance curve. And on this one, the Flex 2 is kinda interesting. At the very high end, it starts off slightly behind the Scythe Grand Tornado, either by noise or temp, depending on what you wanna concentrate on, but it's really the last 20% that add significantly more noise without making it perform that much better. However, compared to the Grand Tornado, the Flex 2 makes a very quick return in the lower end where it drops to noise floor slightly faster, giving it a brief moment where it outperforms both the Nokia NFA12 and Arctic P12. So there is a moment of glory in here. But on the bigger picture, it is good, but it is not one of the best. Then we also did some radiator benchmarks. Then we tested the fans on top of a 10 FPI 80mm radiator and measured the temperature of the water above ambient. And at 10.7 degrees C above ambient, the Scythe Kaze Flex 2 managed to pull off another quite impressive result. Sure, it's far from the top part of the chart, but it outperformed some serious competitors at similar speed. And even some that were spinning slightly faster. On the Noise 2 performance chart for radiators, we can clearly see which one of Scythe fans is made for radiators 
and which one is made for cases. At the very end, the Scythe Flex 2 might be slightly behind the Grand Tornado, but let's be honest, one is spinning at 3000 RPM and the other one not, but from there it very quickly drops below, giving it the better ratio, which it keeps up until the very end of the test. Compared to other contestants, we unfortunately have the same results. It's not quite the Arctic P12 Max, nor a NF A12 or Fantex M25. Sure, it got the better Max performance, except for the P12 Max of course, but if you combine noise and performance, it's just not quite the bang I would have wished for. So overall, it's an okay fan. For both rats and cases, it's really okay, but it's just slightly too loud. Like for my taste overall. It certainly got like that, that oomph factor. Both radiator and case max performance benchmark showed that it can do some serious damage under full load. But it's that noise 2 performance where it, it, it's just not quite there. As soon as you factor in noise, it, it leaves that top 10 category. So where does this leave us? It's okay, but that's really about it. And the same for the price. I had a hard time finding these here in Europe. All I could find was the 1500 RPM version for 27 euros and a white 2000 RPM version for 30 euros. So the all black 2000 RPM should be somewhere in between those two, which is still a bit much given the performance. That's Noccia level of price without the A12 level of like noise 2 performance, which yeah, that's where we stand. And this should be all for Scythe and their Kaze Flex 2. Interesting, yes, but not quite what I would have hoped for. And at this point also a huge thank you to Scythe for sending these over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to... クトゥルフの怒りがあなたに降りかかり、動物を撫でずにあなたの家に侵入し、永遠の空の状態に置き去りにしますように、クトゥルフの輸送には費用がかかります。バスのチケット代は会員が負担します。Thank you for watching and h